So today let's explore this USB fast charge tester donated by Fnirsi. And this device can test USB chargers including the fast ones and USB charged devices or USB powered devices. It can monitor the USB port voltage, the current drawn from the USB port and a lot of other things like the power, temperature and let's explore what else it can actually measure. Let's unwrap it because it's shiny and let's take a closer look at the box and then of course let's open it and test it. And this model is FNB58 made by Fnirsi and it seems the monitor the voltage can be from 4 to 28 volts, quite a wide range, 0 to 7 amps, so it can measure up to quite a high current, up to 120 watts. It can also measure the capacity and use of electricity, basically measuring the amp hours and watt hours consumed by the load. It seems to have like 5 decimal digits resolution, screen flip 360 degrees, not sure what's this, and it has a USB-A, a micro USB and USB-C connector. But now of course let's open it. I haven't opened it before, so it's going to be a surprise for me, and here's the device, FNB58 with this joystick control, back button, this can be also pressed, some small hole probably for a reset button or maybe some LED, PC connection here, and it can use a USB-A connector as an input, Type-C or micro USB, and as an output it can use USB-C or this socket USB-A, and there is this PD comma switch on or off, it has a large display and it even seems to have a Bluetooth and again the voltage and current ranges and it seems it can go down to zero volts connected to a PC or powered from the PC. So now let's try to plug it into a USB-A socket of this fast charger. It turns on and shows the voltage, the current and the power. Of course it's not loaded yet. Now let's try to load it using my test load and it's measuring the current, the power when I press this, does it freeze the measurements? Probably yes. And going to the right, here it again says the voltage current power, the voltages of the data pins, some protocol probably, some statistics, and the next setting or display is this waveform or oscilloscope, which is basically showing the voltage and the current and how it changes in time. I can stop it and restart it. The big button doesn't seem to do anything in this mode. A long press. And I can see some different modes of the oscilloscope. That's quite interesting. Two and a half microseconds division. And I can see basically the ripple on the voltage. There seem to be several modes. 0 0.1 seconds division. I guess this is the data pins voltages and this 2.5 microseconds division mode, which is probably good to observe the ripple on the voltage. The next one is... Fast charge. Warning, using fast charging function will apply high voltage. Please disconnect any device connected to the output port. If you burn the device, please be responsible for it. Let's disconnect this and... I guess now it detected the modes of the charger it supports. This charger can do 5, 9 and 12 volts, which is right. PD trigger. And this charger doesn't support it probably. Here I can select the voltage. 12, and it runs at 12. 20, it doesn't support 20, so it's not going to work. 9, this works. Nice. Here you can basically set the voltage in small steps. Well, now the voltage is too low. But of course this charger is stops at 12 volts. It can't do any more. Seems like multiple different protocols of fast charging communication. Various types of communication and the load uses to negotiate the voltage with the charger. 
statistics. Not sure what's this. Battery capacity calculation. It seems it can calculate the capacity of the battery based on how much charge or energy went in. Offline recording. Toolbox. Cable resistance detection. I'm not sure does it measure the resistance of the cable going out or coming in. Well, I guess it's the resistance of the cable at the input side. It shows a lot of resistance with this horrible cable. It shows way less for this USB-C cable. There is a lot of other functions. PD converter. Settings and general the display brightness. Standby brightness. It goes into standby brightness after one minute. Refresh rate, temperature, Celsius or Fahrenheit. Language, probably Chinese and English. G sensor, start page, touch tone. Now the buttons have no beep. Record, curve record time. Trigger, system. Restore factory settings, about. And back to the main screen and this button seems to go through four modes of the screen. It really even has a G sensor. When I flip it 180 degrees, the screen flips. So it's always right. It seems they put quite a lot of engineering into it. It definitely has a lot of useful functions, for example this battery capacity calculation. It will get an estimate of the capacity of the battery in the charged device. You can assess the voltage of the battery and also a conversion efficiency, because of course some energy will be lost in the device. Not all energy goes into the battery. Here I'm setting the voltage, the efficiency, and I can measure different groups of batteries probably. And here I can see the result in amp-hours. And also the cable resistance detection is quite a useful function. This is very useful because some cheap cables have a bloody high resistance and you're wondering why your device is charging so slow. And of course I forgot to mention that the cable resistance detection has to be calibrated before you actually measure the resistance of a cable. And you have to use it with a load that draws a constant current. The manual recommends half an amp to about one amp. For the calibration you basically plug it directly into the charger and press this. It stores the charger voltage as a reference. And then you connect it via a cable and it will detect its resistance. And it remembers the reference voltage even when unplugged. You go back to the cable resistance detection. It remembers the reference and it measures the resistance of the cable. And this one is about 270 milliohms, which is not bad for up to about one amp charging. It wasn't meant for anything higher. And this horrible Chinese cable is 1.6 ohms, 1.7. And this one is the best one so far. It was probably meant for a fast charging. And it's short and thick. But now of course everybody wants to take a peek inside of it, so let's try to open it and see the internals. The metal housing seems to be one piece, so I probably have to pull it out. This cover probably comes out. And the rest of it probably slides out on the other side. It cannot go in here because there is this bit. So it should slide this way. And of course I should also do this. And this plastic cover actually clicks out and now it slides out. And that's it, here's the display. There's one more screw. And there is a piece of foam which reveals maybe other screw. Yes. You have to bend this away. It comes out of the plastic housing and this is connected using a connector here. I guess this board is the Bluetooth module and it connects to these pads and there is a microcontroller, another chip, some small inductor, small chip, transistor, another chip, some crystal oscillator probably, tiny resistors and capacitors, a diode, another chip here, resistors, capacitors, this is probably also some chip, the button, the joystick, I guess this is the accelerometer and some very low resistance current sensing shunts are 0 to 20, 20 milliohms. If they're in parallel it's 10 milliohms in total. 
I guess this diode is in a polarity protection. This inductor is probably in a booster buck regulator, powering the control circuitry. It has to basically generate a constant voltage out of a variable voltage at the input. The crystal oscillator clocks the microcontroller. Thanks to the accelerometer, the display can flip and it's never upside down. These shunts allow it to measure the current draw. And that's it, there's not much else on the board. There is nothing under the display. There's really not that much to see. All the magic is happening in the microcontroller and some other chips. And now of course let's reassemble it before I break the display cable. So that's this USB tester from Fnirsi and of course there is a link to it in the description. And please consider supporting my channel on Patreon or using the thanks button. This really helps me a lot. And big thanks to all of you who already support me. And I also plan to test a portable oscilloscope from Fnirsi.